Coming up on Falcon Fever. The UN women are Peach Belt Conference champs. See how they dominated over the weekend. We've also got a special guest in studio. And the women's basketball team is welcoming a new head coach. Coming up, I'll tell you what they're doing to prepare for the upcoming season. Plus, the guys' soccer team is marching towards the postseason. See if they took care of UNC Pembroke. Falcon Fever starts now. Hello everyone, welcome into Falcon Fever, I'm Coleman Sears. And I am RJ Sievertsgaard. We will start things off for, with cross country, Coleman. Yep, and UM's women cross country team are now the 2011 Peach Belt Conference champions, and they earned the title in convincing fashion. The Falcons captured their first conference championship Saturday. The women turned in an impressive performance to grab the team crown, a first in Montevallo history. Junior Haley Evans posted an outstanding 6K time of 23.16 that that time bested the rest of the field by nearly 30 seconds and shattered UM's old 6K record. Here's what Coach Tommy Barksdale had to say about the women's performance. Haley Evans was the overall champion uh, and it was great to see that. Uh, she blew away the field. Uh, we actually blew away the field as a team, won by 30 points. Uh, it was great. Uh, the men ran well also. Uh, we almost had our first all-conference uh, runner this year with Aaron Bush. Uh, the men were packed up. Uh, we're getting there. Men can be there in a couple years, but you know, to have the first championship under for the women under our belt is great, and uh, we're not stopping here. Uh, we have regionals in a couple weeks, and uh, that's what we're looking, setting our sight for now. They finished. Kaylee Glover finished second for the Falcons and fifth overall, finishing at 23.54, third fastest in school history. Enemy Matsunaga and Lauren Rekia both finished in the top ten. The men's cross-country team finished seventh at the Peach Belt Conference Championship. Sophomore Aaron Bush led the surge for UM, finishing 15th overall at 27.27, which ranks third in school history for an 8K race. Let's hear what Coach Tommy Barksdale had to say about the guys. They finished seventh. They finished seventh last year. They were seventh this year. Uh, they were 20 points away from uh, from finishing sixth and 30 points from uh, fifth. 30 points. You know, the women won by 30 points. It's big. But with not, us not having a number five, you know, we had a, Austin McIntosh was our number five runner and did a very good job for us, especially coming off of soccer, not having a, a whole lot of training underneath him. So he did very well for us. Freshman Zach Walsh and sophomore Mark McDonald fished, finished 22nd and 26th overall, respectively. Montevello beat Francis Marion and Armstrong Atlantic in the race. Well, we'll stick with cross country for a moment as we have a special interview for you. Falcon Fever reporter Casey Beasley is here with conference champion Haley Evans in studio to talk about the races last weekend in Aiken, South Carolina. Before we head over to hear let, to her, let's hear what Coach Barksdale had to say about his star runner. Haley did an outstanding job. She actually surprised me. Uh, there's about six girls from the conference that could have won the championship outright like she did. She was one of those, so it was her and five others. Uh, and going earlier this season, we raced a, a, a pre-conference meet there at the same course against some of the same teams, and she got beat. So she knew what she had to do going into it. Or I don't think it's actually hit her just yet. Uh, we call her conference champion, but you know she still doesn't. I don't think it, she realizes it. And you know what Haley did was great for the school, great for the team, uh, and it's something to build upon. I'm Casey Beasley, and I'm here with Haley Evans. Congratulations! How does it feel to be cross country champion? It feels really good. It's nice to know that the 6 a.m. workouts and the summer miles really paid off. Um, in the soundbite, your coach said he didn't think it had hit you yet. Has it? Um, it still really hasn't. I don't know. I just we weren't expecting it, and so it's just kind of something I just I'm working through, I guess. Um, I know you got beat previously two weeks before on the same place. Um, what did you do to turn things around? It wasn't really that I changed anything. We were just in a different spot in our season. We um, started hills a lot longer than we usually do, and so I just hit more speed work, and so it was just about peaking at the right time, which obviously – Worked out. I know the team's getting re ready for regionals. What are you doing to prepare for that? Um, again, there's nothing we can really do anymore. It's just to stay in shape. And so we just kept on with the same routine. We haven't changed anything. And so we we'll just keep working hard. And we have to work hard if we're going to do anything at regionals. Well, thank you so much, Haley. Back to you guys. Well, thanks, Casey. Uh, she'll be joining us later in the show. Now it's time to switch gears to the soccer field. And while it was senior night, for the men's and women's soccer teams over at Varsity Field on Saturday, the teams also showed their support for breast cancer awareness. 
Coming off the dramatic double OT finish in their last outing, seniors Phil Jackson, Tyson Eo, and Vance Curo hope to get a W in their last regular season game on varsity field against UNC Pembroke. From the kickoff, the Falcons were keeping the pressure on the Braves goalie, but at the end of the first half, both teams remained scoreless. Then in the 78th minute of the second half, Mike Renzima cleans up the loose ball in front of the net with a huge goal, putting the Falcons up 1-0. Moments later in the 83rd minute, Pembroke managed to sneak one of only two shots on goalie Brendan Ledgeway by for the equalizer and sending this one into overtime. Neither team could seal the deal in double OT where fatigue seemed to set in. Here's what Coach Hassler had to say. Well, it, it was a good game between, between two of the top teams in the, in the peach belt. And I thought we played really well. We, we started missing our top striker, um, but the guys on the field played with a lot of heart, played, I think, some, some exciting soccer, and we, we created chances. We just didn't put them away today. This group isn't complacent at all. They're hungry um, to continue to play through the, uh, through the national tournament. You know, today was frustrating. We, have <clears throat> we had a chance to really keep a stranglehold on the regular season championship. Um, the tie hurts us with points. And in the end, both teams would have to settle with the 1-1 tie, taking UM to 4-1-2 and in Peach Belt play. The men's soccer team will host Francis Marion in the first round of the Peach Belt Conference Tournament November 1st. The guys grab the number two seed, and the Patriots are seventh seed. Francis Marion defeated Montevello in their only match this season, 2-0 in South Carolina. Earlier in the doubleheader on Saturday, the women's soccer team also hoped to get that last victory at home for seniors Kristen Rosado, Michaela Murch, and Denise Mannion. For Coach Hughes, and it is now or never for the Falcons at the end of their season looks to be approaching fast. Early in the first half, Christine Prince finds Camilla Aldrin, who loads one up from deep and tries for the goal. For the game, Montevallo attempted 13 shots, only one of those was on goal, which was here when Prince bounces off one Pembroke defender unscathed and still manages to co collect herself for a 1-0 lead. But only five minutes later in the 83rd minute, the Braves slipped one past goalie Alyssa Maxwell, sending into extra time. The Falcons had a great opportunity with it tied up 1-1 in sudden death to put Pembroke away, but Rosado misses the go-ahead for the Falcons. Here's what Rosado said after the game. Do that, we go to, we go to conference. Yeah, um, Columbus State, I mean, they're not going to be an easy team, but they're not going to be, you know, unbeatable team for us. We're a good team, we just haven't shown up all year. And now we're starting to show up, we're starting to show how we can play, so we can definitely beat Columbus State. And much like the men, the women end in a 1-1 double OT tie. It is their first tie of the season. With the volleyball season beginning to wind down, it's crunch time for Anna Garrison and her Falcons. The Falcons turned their lackluster season around, starting a three-game streak against Erskine. To start things off, Maniati and Michelle Carl had 11 kills each for the match, while freshman Katie Best tied second for a UEM record on hitting percentage at 75%. The Falcons won in three straight, met, three straight sets. In familiar fashion, Maniati stood out for the Falcons as they defeated Limestone Ati and Michelle Walker each had 12, 12 kills. Senior Rachel Wartiski broke the record for digs in a three-game match for the third time this season with a season high of 31 digs. The Falcons won again 3-0. The, volley the volleyball team came away with an exciting win as they defeated Lenore Ryan last Saturday. Maniati led the Falcons with 14 kills. Michelle Walker followed, contributing 10 kills, while Anna Garrison brought in 40 assists to help the team to victory. The Falcons shut out Lenore Ryan in three straight sets to win 3-0. Ati and Walker both had another nine kills to their season total, and Anna Garrison dished out 34 assists as the Falcons swept their competition in the fourth game in a row, winning the last five out of six. Gaining all the momentum, you, momentum they needed as, the, as they have tough conference games coming up. Well, Falcon Fever reporter Casey Beasley is here to talk some women's basketball. Yeah, Casey, what is it that you got for us today? Well, guys, I went and talked to the new head coach for women's basketball team to see what she was all about. It was really interesting to see how she's teaching her Falcons. The women's basketball season is less than two weeks away. I caught up with their new head coach, Cindy Hilbrick, to talk with her about the team and her preseason preparation. 
It's definitely exciting. Um, it's been quite an adjustment going from an assistant to a head coach. Um, there's a lot more responsibility. There's a lot more riding on your shoulders, um, on your reputation. Um, so it, it's been kind of a hard adjustment, but it's been really exciting. Um, I'm really looking forward to the start of the season. Um, it's really helped that I came from a conference school. Um, so that part of the adjustment hasn't been too difficult. Um, we know what's coming in the conference and we know what to expect once we start our Peach Belt Conference play. Meet the newest addition to the women's basketball program, Coach Cindy Hilbert. She is in her ninth year of coaching and most recently was an assistant coach for conference rival USC Aiken. She feels that the fact that she has previously coached in the Peach Belt Conference will benefit the Falcons. I really want the program to kind of turn around. Um, I want people to know that women's basketball is working hard in the classroom, um, that we're trying to be respected on campus and in the community. With basketball season just around the corner, Coach Hilbrick has high expectations for her team this year. Tiana Boxley is a junior transfer for the Falcons that really appreciates Coach Hilbrick and all that she's doing for the team. Um, I really like Coach Hilbrick's style of coaching. Um, she's not a big yeller, you know, she just basically tells us, she explains to us what it is that she wants us to do, and then from there she just expects us to do it. And of course, just like on any other basketball team, if we don't do it, there's consequences for it. So, but I really appreciate her as a coach and what she's trying to do with the program. Tiffany McClure is a senior point guard that will tell you the same thing. Um, I like the coach, coaching style. She, um, she gets the job done. She like coming here every day, focus, making us focus, helping us understand better what we have to do and what we don't need to do and stuff like that. He's still into the fast pace, getting the ball up and down the court and mostly defense, so I mean, it's about the same. Coach Hilbrick is confident this upcoming season will be a good one for the women's basketball program. Hoping that we can create more support and more awareness on campus and just throughout the community. Um, I'm hoping that the team can really start to believe in themselves and start to be confident. Um, I think that this team is going to sneak up on a lot of, a lot of people. Uh, we're really athletic, we can be explosive at times, and as long as we stick together and work hard, I think we're going to win a lot of games that people don't expect us to win. Coach Hilbert gets her head coaching debut November 7th versus Sanford. For Falcon Fever, I'm Casey Beasley reporting. Well, great story there, Casey. <laughs> Interesting enough, isn't the interim coach from last season still coaching for the Falcons this year? Yes, that's right. Brittany Godsey, she is back to the assistant coaching position, and she seems to be working well with Coach Hilbrick. All right, Casey, uh, thank you so much. And switching gears from the hardwood to, put it to the putting green, the women's golf team wrapped their fall season play on the 25th. The team traveled to St. Augustine, Florida to take part in the Flagler Fall Slam. The women's golf team finished 16th out of 19, shooting a 691 overall. Montevallo's top performer was Ashley Beck, who shot an 82 on the first day and an 83 on the second to finish 21 over par to tie for 45th. Well, here we go. Fever in 50, and if you don't already know, we are about to cover upcoming UM games in 50 seconds or less, so don't blink because it goes quick. Let's get to it. The women's cross-country team looks to build on their conference championship November 5th. They and the guys take part in the Southeast Regional Championships. The men's soccer team will be playing their final regular season match on the road the 29th against Georgia Southwestern and will begin their, their hunt for the national championship with the first round of the PBC tournament on November 1st. The women's soccer team has two games left in the regular season. The 26th, they play on the road against Columbus State Cougars at 5 and travel to Georgia Southwestern the 29th. Then on November 1st, they will participate in the first round of the PBC tournament. The volleyball team has a nice road trip upcoming. On the 28th, they go on the road to Armstrong Atlantic, and on the 29th, they take on the Saints of Flagler. As always, if you can't get enough of Falcon Fever, we have plenty of ways to connect online. Log on to our YouTube channel to watch past Falcon Fever episodes and to see full interviews by sur simply searching Montevello for you. Now, if you're a Facebooker or a tweeter, you can follow us at UM Falcon Fever. That's right, and if you do tweet or leave a comment, it may be featured on next week's show. Speaking of tweets and such, Coleman, we've got some tweets posts from some of the Falcon players. Uh, yep, let's take a look at some of them. On Twitter, on Twitter, Phil Jackson tweeted out before the game against UNC Pembroke. Jackson said, game day, baby, come out and support. 
Men's cross country runner sophomore Mark McDonald tweeted out before the Peach Belt Conference Championship, and he said, 40 minutes, nervous. Women's cross country runner Whitney Adkins and Inmi Matsunaga tweeted, we are conference champions. And Inmi Matsunaga said, I am so proud of my UMXC team for being conference champs. Go Lady Falcons. Absolutely. And for extended coverage of Montevallo Sports, visit the Athletics website at www.montevallofalcons.com. Well, that's all we've got for you now. Tune in next week for more Falcon coverage. For Coleman Sears, I am RJ Sievertsgaard. With that interesting show, we're out of here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs>